On this episode of Ink Master Review, we'll be looking at four artists who left the competition before their time. What's up, guys? I'm Ryan Rich, and thanks so much for joining me here today. I'm a big fan of Ink Master. Me and my wife rewatched pretty much the whole show during quarantine. And here I wanted to talk about four artists that I wish we could have seen more of on Ink Master. Artists who I think left too soon. Starting us off is going to be Elisheba. Don't come over here, Oliver. Elisheba was one of the contenders in season eight. In the first episode, she was one of the four people who didn't make either Team Peck or Team Nunez. I think part of this was the canvas she was assigned who was supposed to be open for the final opportunity they had to make a team wasn't actually open. He kept going, no, I don't want to get that. I don't want to get a skull because uh, what, what kind of role model am I going to be for my son if I have a skull tattooed on me? You need to get tattooing. I know. I know. I really want him to, you know. I'm nervous to get a skull. He doesn't um, like any of the ideas. I, I don't want to get a skull. skull. I don't know how I'm going to explain that to my son. If you're not willing to give her this open canvas, the less time you waste, the I better. Don't want to talk to I know. I'm just, I'm just too nervous to... I'm too nervous to do what she wants to do. This mother douchebag is not going to destroy my chance at this I guess you should call somebody else in there. He wasted about an hour of her time trying to struggle to agree to get tattooed, to what type of tattoo, and eventually just left. So one hour entirely gone. She's already rattled. Her last chance might be gone. Then finally they do get another canvas who comes in and says, dope, I love that design, tattoo it. So minus an hour plus all that stress and being rattled. She turns out what I think was still a really dope tattoo. It's cool, it's got the colors. They say the colors aren't totally in there, aren't totally saturated. Uh, I'm not sure I agree, although I'm obviously not an expert in any way. I think it was still beautiful. And I think given the scenario and all, they should have given her maybe more leeway or understood that. Despite doing a backwards Japanese tattoo, it seemed like they liked what she did in the other challenges too. I think she was a very creative artist, and I would have loved to see what else she could have created had she been picked for a team and stayed in the competition. I'm really disappointed she left. Next is going to be Chris German from Season 8. Now he goes, what the fuck is in there? Oh, I found a dead rat! This illustrious opera singer was born in Transylvania, and because it was communist still at that time, he said it was very restrictive society. And I think that's what shaped his tattooing, he said as well. He really does things in such an unconventional way. And I wonder if that's part of what, to the judges and everyone, made this tattoo unattractive. The tattoo he did in episode two, where the challenge was hot rods and choppers. I love this tattoo. In fact, it was probably my favorite one of the day. They said it wasn't legible, that it didn't have enough contrast in it. I disagree, plus the fact that it will lighten up. I could tell what's going on, but I think it was such an unconventional design that they didn't see the beauty in it. I'm really sad that we didn't get to see more from him. I want to check up on this guy. I would have loved to have that tattoo on me. The guy was so funny. I think there was a lot worse tattoos that day too. Let me know if you agree or not. This may just be a me thing in my opinion of liking this tattoo. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Seriously, there's like nine of you. Come on, just comment. I will read it, I promise. Shout out to Floofy. Next is Jamie Davies from season two. He got eliminated on episode 10. He was the tattoo artist with no tattoos. Despite tattooing 17 years, he never got a tattoo himself, but that's okay. That's his right if he wants to do that. One theme earlier in this episode actually was not judging people for having tattoos. And here they come around and do the opposite. I get that they're in the industry, but the same principle should apply. If he doesn't want to get tattoos, then who the hell are you to judge him? I'm not saying this had anything to do with him getting eliminated, but the fact that this appeared alongside it in the episode he got eliminated where they were judging him so hard for it, I can't help but call it into question. The guest judge especially really pressed him on this, along with both Peck and Nunez. I don't like the fact that Jamie doesn't have tattoos. Every one of us wears the mark. We all get tattooed because we love it and we believe in it. How can you be a tattooer and not have tattoos? If you're going to be a tattooer, you have to have tattoos. I can't respect not having tattoos. It was really disappointing to see this. He was a great artist. This was the first time he'd ever been in the bottom. I like the tattoo a lot. This wolf is pretty fierce looking, but I need you to do me a favor. Get some tattoos. If you want to be respected as a tattooer in the business, you need some tattoos. In tattooing people, you got to know what it's like and what it feels like and experience it so you know. I understand I have 17 years of karmic retribution, so... 17 years of waiting. Get some tattoos real soon. It was just a real upset. 
One thing that may have pushed the judges over was after grilling them on it, they go back, all the other artists with him in the competition help and draw fake sleeves with Sharpies on him. Everybody in the house did this? It's my little Ink Master 2 collabo. I'm not feeling that one at all. A little bit of a mockery of what you're doing with the drawings. It was not intended as disrespect to you guys in any way. Forrest, thoughts for Jamie? Not too many. The judges, I think, took this as mocking them, but it should be mocking them. Because mind your business, that doesn't matter. If clients don't want to get tattooed by someone who doesn't have tattoos, well then, okay, fine, just go get tattooed somewhere else. He's been doing it 17 years. How dare you call this guy's respect for and dedication to his craft in question? You honestly feel like I've been one of the more well-rounded, more solid tattoo artists throughout this competition. This is my first time in the bottom. I think the judges deserve to be mocked by this, but what they didn't see was that this was all the other artists in the competition coming together to support him. Maybe that should have made them think, hmm, maybe I'm in the wrong here. But it didn't, he still got eliminated. I'm not saying it wasn't the worst tattoo of the day, but the fact that this coincided with all the judges' harsh judgment on his not having tattoos can't be ignored. Jamie, I did not want you to leave. My vote was not for you, it was for Sarah. I got outweighed. I think you've worked really hard and you've shown a lot of versatility. Please pack your machines and close shop. He was a great artist. Now, Josh Hibbard. First appeared on season three, then returning for season five. First starting with season three, everyone just bullied the shit out of this guy. I think in a lot of social situations, something can start off in kind of the wrong foot. Maybe he does one thing that makes a bad impression or someone says, oh, that's really sneaky and underhanded. Or maybe he's the first one to do something or say it. And then the group think becomes, oh, Josh is this guy. He's a this guy and he's, uh, he's really bad and he's really annoying and he's so sneaky. And I think that's exactly what happened here. Just the mob mentality won out. There were even times when his fellow competitors would kind of flip-flop on it. There's one episode where Kyle Dunbar got paired with him for the Flash Challenge where they won a trip to Germany together. And then after that, they're going, they're taking shots together, they're going off drinking, just, oh yeah, Jimmy just complains. And he's always gonna do that. And they're hanging out. And they, Kyle's going, yeah, we might be good friends actually. And then the very next episode, they go back and they sit down after a Flash Challenge and tattoo babies yelling at him and then Kyle starts going you're just a bad artist I think you're going home today just unprompted it's always they're just sitting there and they're like fuck you Josh it was ridiculous the tattoo we got kicked out for on season three I actually liked they said it wasn't placed well or an issue with the placement I think it might have been because it was biomechanical I'm not necessarily the biggest biomech guy but I can still really appreciate the art in it and I think he killed it. However, his elimination on season five was a true big upset. If anyone doesn't know about what happened here, he got kicked out for breach of contract for smoking weed in his off time during the competition. Now this was just so disappointing. Not him smoking weed, but the fact that they're really gonna kick him off for that. We have such archaic marijuana laws and drug laws period in this country. I think everyone's drinking beer in there, they're having Corona sponsorships, but a guy just wants to have a joint in his free time to deal with the anxiety and all the kickback. I just think it's so sad they sent him home for that. He honestly could have won the whole thing. However, instead of getting a feature in Ink Magazine, he got the cover of Dope Magazine. And he has an article under interview talking about his experience on Ink Master getting kicked off and what he's doing on his own in Oregon with marijuana laws and with his tattoo business. So I wish him the best, I think he's still doing well, and but I just wish we could have seen more of him. I think he really could have changed the competition had he stayed. Do you agree with this list? Who would you like to have seen more of on Ink Master? Leave a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. I'm Ryan Rich, thank you for joining me, and I can't wait to see you next time on Ink Master Review.